This is Jared Horak, and this is my latest Preakness 2024 video. It's Monday, May 13th. They just drew the field for the Preakness Stakes. And let's pull up the field now, and we'll talk about the horses, the odds, and the pace scenario. Now, breaking from the inside post is going to be uh, Mugatu. Uh, Jeff Englar is the trainer. Joe Bravo is going to ride, and he's 20 to 1 morning line. Post position 2 goes to Uncle Heavy. Robert Reed Jr. is the trainer. Irad Ortiz Jr. is the rider, and he's 20 to 1 morning line. Number three is going to be Catching Freedom for trainer Brad Cox. Flavian Pratt's the rider, and he is 6 to 1 morning line. Number four is Muth. Bob Baffert. Juan Hernandez is the rider here, and he is your 8 to 5 morning line favorite. Mystic Dan, your Kentucky Derby winner with, for trainer Ken McPeak. Brian Hernandez Jr. is going to be aboard 5 to 2 morning line. He's the second choice. Number six, Seas the Gray for D. Wayne Lucas. Jamie Torres is his rider, and he is 15 to 1 morning line. Just Steel for Wayne Lucas. Joel Rosario is his pilot, and he's 15 to 1. Next one in line, number eight, Tuscan Gold for trainer Chad Brown. Tyler Gaffleone is his rider, and he's 8 to 1. And then finally, number nine, Imagination for trainer Bob Baffert. And Frankie DeTore is his rider, and he's 6 to 1 morning line. So that's the nine horse field. We had the potential for 10 horses, but the local horse, Copper Tax, they decided not to run him. So we have a field of nine. And now through post position order, now let's go through and see which horses have speed, which horses are closers. Um, we've got to number one, doesn't have any speed at all. So from that inside post, most likely he's just going to save all the ground in last, hope for a fast pace, and try to pass some horses. And he ran fifth in the bluegrass stakes. He got a decent amount of pace in that race, and he was able to split the field there. I don't see that much pace in the paper race here. Uh, so he's one that's uh, probably going to be outrun and just not enough pace to set up his late run. Uncle Heavy, more of a mid-pack type. So I read Ortiz Jr. is going to probably try to save some ground. I'll try to stay within hailing distance of the leaders. I think the same thing goes for catching freedom. I think Flavian Pratt's going to try to just work out a decent trip, keep the leaders in his sights. And as a closer, he's going to try to have to move a little bit earlier maybe than they would like to. Uh, but they're going to have to move, especially if the pace isn't quick. Now, Muth is your most likely pace setter from post four. No speed to his inside, and only Mystic Dan, your Kentucky Derby winner, breaking right outside of him. That one has some tactical speed. But I would assume with Muth that they're going to go to the lead from post four. He's the inside speed. Juan Hernandez is probably going to put him on the lead. He already beat Mystic Dan in the Arkansas Derby, and I think that he's probably the one to catch and beat in this spot. Now, Mystic Dan's probably not going to get that inside ground-saving tactical trip this time because Muth is going to be setting the pace, and then Mystic Dan might have to be the one to try to put some pressure on him. Uh, Brian Hernandez is going to have some um, decisions to make in this race. If Muth goes early, he doesn't want him to get too far ahead of him, uh, so he may have to uh, work out that kind of trip where he chases Muth and does all the pace dirty work. Sees the gray and just steal. For Seize the Gray, probably sitting more in mid-pack, and then Just Steel got cooked on a pace duel in the Kentucky Derby. They want him to stalk the pace, and I think from this post position, post seven, I think exactly what he'll do is stalk the pace under Joel Rosario. Tuscan Gold, outside tactical type trip, is likely a along with Imagination. But both of those horses have some stalking speed, and it looks like they're going to be stalking uh, towards the outside. So Muth, the inside speed, Mystic Dan probably chasing him, and then you have Just Steel, Tuscan Gold, and Imagination, the three most likely stalking types of breaking from the, the three outside post positions. That's my early look at the Preak mistakes and the field with the odds and the post positions. So don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment if you like this horse racing content. And keep checking my YouTube channel all week. I'm going to be doing some on-site coverage at Pimlico Preakness Week. Uh, so just keep checking my YouTube channel. I'm going to have stuff there. And if you need past performances for Black Eyed Susan Day, the day before the Preakness and Preakness Day, you can get those past performances at todaysracingdigest.com. And also they have the complete digest of Preakness Day edition that they're going to be offering that they do every year. So go on over to todaysracingdigest.com for more details. You can also purchase my um, Black Eyed Susan Day and Preakness Day full cards at the Digest website and at my personal website, therunawayhorse.com. So I'm doing a full card for Black Eyed Susan Day, 14, day, 14 race card of Black Eyed Susan Day, day before the Preakness, and then the Preakness Day full card as well that I do every year. And then for Belmont Stakes Week, I'm going to do the four-day Belmont Stakes Festival at Saratoga, all four full cards from Saratoga Belmont Stakes Week.
And in, and then in between, I do full cards at Santa Anita Park. So go on over to the runawayhorse.com for more details. And that will wrap up this video. And I'll be back all week with more Preakness coverage. And until I see you next time, good luck at the races.